Good afternoon, folks. This is a continuation of the House Appropriations Committee on a beautiful Friday afternoon, February, uh, February May 14th, and we are convened here to um, hear um, testimony on S25. Uh, thank you very much, colleagues, uh, for joining us. Rep. Gannon, Rep. Beck, and Ms. Childs is here to help us understand the bill as well as Mr. Campbell, although I have been told it's casual Friday, so everybody's going by their first name instead. Um, so with that, John, will you, uh, what, what we generally look forward to, high level overview and then take us down to the appropriation sections and um, we'll try to focus on that which is within our jurisdiction. So John, we'll turn to you. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Representative John Gannon from Wilmington for the record. Um, so I will go through the bill very quickly. Um, section, section one deals with uh, towns um, opting into retail sales. Um, the change we made there was the Senate put in a date certain by which towns um, would have had a vote. Um, and if they did not vote, they would have been deemed to have agreed to have cannabis retail. We struck that out of the language and re retained the House position that was in Act 164. Um, the Cannabis Control Advisory Committee, and this is something appropriations will be interested in, um, is we did add two positions um, to the advisory committee. Um, and one of them is the chair um, of the Cannabis for Symptom Relief Oversight Committee or designee. And the second position is one member appointed by the Vermont, Vermont Cannabis Trade Association. The Vermont Cannabis Trade Association is the trade association of medical dispensaries. So there's two additional positions on the advisory um, committee of the Cannabis Control Board. And we did modify another position, but this was not a new position. Um, we had one member with expertise in substance misuse prevention. We just changed that to the chair of the Substance Misuse Prevention Oversight and Advisory Council or designee. Um, then, um, you know, we, in section four and four A, it talks about the reporting obligations of the Cannabis Control Board. Um, and this gets into the timing of when the Cannabis Control Board was appointed. Um, they were supposed to be confirmed by the Senate by January 15th of this year. Um, they were not. Um, they weren't appointed, appointed until March of 2021. Um, so there had to be changes in the way um, that their recommendations, which were on April 1st, had to go. So they had to recommend the fees for the Cannabis Control Board, which means all the licensing fees and things like that. And um, so there are modifications there, but I'll let, when we get to, when you want more detail on that, I think Representative Beck is probably the best person to give you detail because that was an amendment in House Ways and Means to how we go about setting those fees. Um, then, um, and other area that will be important to you in section 4B, we just had two additional reporting requirements. Um, I won't go into detail about that, but then section 4C is an important section for appropriation because it creates two new positions, um, a general counsel position and an administrative assistant position. Um, it's my understanding from the testimony of the chair of the Cannabis Control Board is that they have the funds um, that were appropriated to them already that can cover these positions. Um, then sections five through nine deal with advertising. Um, as you may recall, when the, the, the conference committee met, the, the compromise we reached is that the Cannabis Control Board and the AG's office would come back to the General Assembly with a recommendation on April 1st um, with respect to advertising. Again, because of the delay in the Cannabis Control Board being set up, that couldn't happen. So what the Senate proposed and what we uh, in House GovOps agreed to is to put back in the language on advertising that was in the bill as it left the House Government Operations Committee in the last biennium. So this is, you know, I won't go into de detail about that, but, you know, it, it does allow advertising, whereas when the 
before the conference committee, you know, the bill left the house with a ban on advertising. Um, you know, the attorney general's office testified about the constitutionality um, of what is in the bill now, and they support what's in the bill. They do not support a absolute ban on advertising. And so that's all the sections through section nine. Um, section 10 um, is just, um, it, it amends section eight of act 164 and requires that small cultivated, that cannabis dispensaries, those are the, the medical dispensaries um, when they get an integrated license have to have 25% of flour come from small cultivators. Um, that was just to reach out to small cultivators. Um, then we get into section 11 through 14 of the bill, which deal with the social equity section of the bill. Um, and this is an important section for appropriations. Um, what the social equity program is, it sets up um, a social equity grant and lo loan program that will be administered by ACCD. Um, and it will be funded through two sources. Um, in a House Ways and Means Amendment, um, $50,000 from each integrated licensee, um, plus an appropriation of $500,000. Um, and that will be used primarily for grants and loans to social equity applicants, um, which will be defined by the Cannabis Control Board, um, ACCD, um, the executive director of uh, the racial equity panel um, and the advisory board to the cannabis control board. Um, then let's go on. Um, it, um, section 15 just talks about the transfer of the medical cannabis registry, which is the dispensaries um, from under the, the agency or yeah, the, the Department of Public Safety to the C Cannabis Control Board. Um, originally in Act 164, they were supposed to move over on March of 2022. The Senate moved that up to January 1st, 2021. Um, in testimony from the chair of the Cannabis Control Board, it was recommended that we move that back to March 1st of 2022. And that's what we did um, in that section. Um, and that also applies to section 16. And then finally, the effective dates um, are in section 20. So that is a quick run through of the bill. And I think, uh, whoop, there's one other section I should talk to you about. Um, and that is um, section 17, um, which deals with a ride training. Um, and so to give you a little background on this, um, the Senate uh, proposed um, getting a report on the costs of a ride training. Um, we talked to the Vermont Criminal Justice Council about this issue. And it, what we learned is that it would cost somewhere between 75,000 and 100,000 to get every law enforcement officer trained by December 31st, 2021. What you saw, you see in the bill is that we moved that date out to 2025 because they said they could get everybody trained at no cost by 2025. Um, but we are still working with them um, with respect to some information. For example, right now, anybody who's been a, is a, a level three certified officer as of um, 2015 has to get a ride training within 36 months of leaving the police academy. So they're automatically gonna get it. The, the level three officers who will not get it are people who are certified before 2015. So those are the ones that are, are the focus of getting them trained on A-Ride. So that's part of the issue. Then the questions that have come up from the Vermont Criminal Justice Council are, should level two law enforcement officers receive A-Ride training? Currently, they don't even get DUI training, which is a precursor to getting A-Ride training. So that's an open question with respect to that. Um, the other question that the Vermont Criminal Justice Council had is there are many level three officers um, who don't do traffic stops. And, and a perfect example is like the Office of Professional Regulation Investigators or the Attorney General Investigators. Um, and there's a question of whether they should receive the training or that they could even be qualified to get the training. 
because in order to take a ride tra training, there's a process that you have to go through at the beginning of the training to, to that you have the sufficient um, expertise to make a traffic stop. And the concern of the Vermont Criminal Justice Council is those folks wouldn't even be able to pass that initial test before they get their a ride certification. Um, so I think what we're going to propose is an amendment um, to do a further study around this issue because we still haven't got all the information we need from the F Vermont Criminal Justice Council. Um, and I think the only other thing in there is uh, section 18, um, which talks about the substance misuse prevention funding and Michelle will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think all this section does is put into stat statute um, the $10 million of funding for the the substance misuse prevention. 30%, um, it puts into statute 30% of revenues raised by the cannabis excise tax, not to exceed $10 million per fiscal year, um, is now in statute under this bill. And I think I've covered everything. <laughs> Quickly. Okay, thank you. I, I thought we already had that in statute, that the last bit about, um, Substance misuse prevention, Ms. Childs. It was uh, it was in session law in Act One Sixty Four. There's also the what's new is subsections B and C. B being a uh, provision that the balance there's a carry forward, and C being that um, any carry forward is in addition to revenues that are allocated for substance misuse prevention. It's not a subs it's not a substitute. Would you say that again, please? So subsection C is that any appropriation carry, for, you know, any balance that's carried forward is in addition to the revenues that are allocated uh, by the General Assembly for substance misuse prevention. Uh, so that it's, so on the 30%, so it's, so it doesn't count towards that 30%. So it's additive. So they are increasing the revenues available to them for expenditure in that fund. So if there's 30% that's that, so percent of those funds go in there. And if there is carry forward, you don't then have a smaller amount coming through for that next year. I'm sorry if I'm not explaining. No, I, I, I've got that. So in fact, you know, they it could be carried forward, carried for. There could be, in fact, a lot of money building up into that uh, fund without, I mean, we normally sweep funds uh, at the end of a fiscal year if they're, if they're not expended. These are special funds. Maria, are you there? Can, can you? Yeah, I am. Can, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah, I know you're doing 20 other things. Can, can you help us understand, and, and Michelle, if you'll explain again what this does, and Maria, I'm just curious if this is a common way to handle um, receipts into a fund. Okay, so so can you just, I'm sorry, Michelle, I uh, should have okay. been focused so, here. So you might want to look at the language in section 18. So okay. So subsection A's language was in session law in Act 164 last year. Um, and so this is reenacting it, but putting it in statute in Title 32. Subsections B and C are new. Um, so B is, is saying that there's going to be carry forward um, if there's any balance left at the end of the fiscal year. And subsection C is that that carry forward is in addition to revenues that are allocated pursuant to subsection A. Um, and I and I have to admit this is something that came along through other people to me. So I don't have I I wasn't part of the Anthea was the one who was working on it initially, and then and Stephanie in in the Senate approach. So I'm sorry I don't have much. Okay. More All right. So um, okay. So I'm just uh, when it went through the Senate, it was in this same format. This, it was drafted the same way. Okay, I, I believe what this is saying is that, um, so you appropriate in session law in 18A and anything that's not spent um, according to sub B gets carried forward. And what you're saying is just like in other departments where they have carried forward funds, 
those carry forward funds are in addition to what's appropriated in the in the subsequent year, correct? So, yes. yeah, okay. So it's not like an additional appropriation, it's a carry forward, so you're using part of the prior year's appropriation that wasn't fully expended, yeah. Mm -hmm. There's nothing peculiar about this. This is a common practice. Um, yeah, I think that what they're just stating is that this in this fund, the, the 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 funds can carry forward, and you know they're making that. That's what they're saying. So that okay. yeah, we see that in other departments as well. You know, if the funds okay. are allowed to carry forward, it's the same setup. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I maybe I'm being slow in. We, we, I'm distracted like everybody is. Uh, Robin? Yeah, thank you. Um, the 500,000 in section um, 14 that it says from the general fund to ACCD for the uh, social equity grants, is this actually um, money that we are spending in anticipation of receipts? Or, so I'm not seeing anything about the uh, cannabis special fund, not the misuse, the prevention stuff, but the cannabis special fund running a deficit, which is I know, you know, the old fiscal note from last biennium, we ran a deficit for a few years and then we filled the coffers. So is this separate from that, John, or? It is separate. It is, it is new. Um, okay. And that's 25. And so there was no loan or grant, um, so no social equity loan or grant program in Act 164. So this is a brand new fund okay. that was created um, and we'll have two funding sources. One is an appropriation of $500,000 and the other is, um, fifth, and Scott can explain the change that they made, but basically $50,000 from inch, each integrated licensee. And that, that'll be the two sources of funding for this. Right. So basically a social equity fund. Okay, so we're, we're seeding it with half a million dollars basically once, and then the ongoing would be the 50,000 from various integrated licenses, or is no, that only once? Basically no. once too, because- That's only once also, okay. Yeah, once they obtain a license, they would have to contribute $50,000 to this fund. Okay, just how, once. How about we let uh, Scott explain, describe the amendment and then we'll have the full picture of the bill and then we'll come back to questions. All right, thank you. I'll, um, I'll try to be brief because I know I'm one of the things that's whole standing between you and a weekend. So um, basically what we've done, what House Ways and Means did with this, um, really just surrounding the, uh, the fees is we have um, removed all fees in here with the exception of the $50,000 for an integrated license. And we've asked the Cannabis Control Board to come back to us by October 1st with a recommendation for all of these fees. And it's the intent of Ways and Means to hit the ground running in January and to get these fees all locked up and, uh, and out there to the public. Um, also in here, it's in the second instance of amendment is uh, requirement for the Cannabis Control Board, in addition to setting the fees to come up with a plan to take not more than 10 years to reimburse the general fund for the half million dollar seed money that they're sending over. Um, again, that change for the integrated fee in the document we got from GovOps, they had 3% uh, of gross sales up to $50,000 for an integrated license. And we chose just to make that um, just $50,000 for an integrated license. That's a big deal. We figure anybody that would be applying for that would have the, the resources to make that. Um, in the fifth instance of amendment, um, as it came over from the, came over from GovOps, there was a transfer from the general fund to the, um, the transfer from the, uh, general fund to the um, cannabis business development fund. And then there was an appropriation over to the um, to ACCD for the, uh, for the, the assistance for disadvantaged groups that representative Gannon was um, talking about there. We didn't really feel like it was our, our job, our role to make an appropriation. That's uh, 
that's your all's world. And so what we've done in here is we've, uh, in 22, we've transferred 500,000 from the general fund to the cannabis business development fund. Um, and then we leave it up to you to appropriate that to the, um, to what Representative Gannon was discussing earlier. Um, and then that is ongoing. That would be from the, uh, the that would be from the cannabis business development fund as these licenses come in. Um, so that's basically the gist of what we did with it. We removed all fees except for that integrated license. We um, made sure that $500,000 got back to the general fund um, as they stand this thing up to, re, to reimburse the general fund for that seed money. And we took out the appropriations language, figuring that you all could, could do that better than we could. Okay. Thank you. So that means we need to be amending this bill to provide for that. Yes. Lovely. Yes. Okay. Do yep. you have something ready to go for us, Michelle, if we decide to go there? Are we? So, um, so the appropriation is in the Senate Government Operations Amendment as it came over from the Senate. Um, Ways and Means was looking at it the way that the Senate wanted to do the language and put it in there is they uh, have $500,000 being transferred from the general fund into the cannabis business development fund. And then they transfer it out of that fund to ACCD to use for the loans and the grants. And, um, and that was the way that they in, and work, uh, JFO had said to do it in the Senate. And so um, I defer to JFO on those because it's I don't typically do those. And but then when we got Ways and Means, they said, no, it shouldn't be that way. And I brought Becky in and we were talking about it. The ACCD is designated um, as the entity that would be doing the loans and grants programs. And it also in the, if you look at the loan language, the fund language that's in S25, it specifies what it's for. And so we thought that you didn't need to send it to ACCD. You could just have it in the special fund and it could be utilized by ACCD. And so um, I, I leave it there. I tried to get a kind of some clarification from Stephanie, but Becky and I weren't clear entirely about why they wanted it done that way. So maybe Maria can help sort that out with regard to the special funds. But I can show you the language is, um, as if you look in section 12 of the House Government Operations Amendment and section 987, it goes through and talks about the funds that can, that the monies that comprise the fund and then subsection C talks about what the fund is to be used for. Um, and then section 988 talks about ACCD administering the fund and using the, that, those monies. And so section 14, which is on page 25 of the House Government Operations Amendment has the transfer and appropriation. Um, so I do have an amendment that I had done for Ways and Means and they chose not to do it, um, but it would just okay. be to essentially strike subsection B and amend the title of 14 to just be appropriation so that an FY22, $500,000 is transferred from general funds to the Cannabis Business Development Fund. Thank you. Maria, were you following that? I was, but um, what, I, what piqued my interest is that, uh, Michelle, you had mentioned that Stephanie um, because she's worked on this bill all the way through the process, I just wanted to touch base with her and see if um, I can get her read on how yeah. she thinks it should be done. And so anyway, I'm trying to text sure. her. Sure. And Becky and um, I emailed her yesterday and she emailed us back an answer, but we didn't, we still didn't understand. Yeah, no, I get that. Anyway, yeah, so I get sorry. That. <laughs> no, 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 perfectly fine. I just, um, I just want to talk to her because we need to get this right. And uh, sure. yeah. So, so but I'm, there I'm is an appropriation it. in there. So I, you, um, yeah. it's just more about whether or not you need to move it over to ACCD. Yes. Okay. And I'm looking at it right now. So let me just keep trying to get Stephanie and we'll okay. Thank sort you. this out. 
I, I, I'm getting pretty thoroughly lost here. So I hope others are trying to get this sorted. I, um, Robin, I, I don't know if your hand was next, but. Um, thank you. Uh, I actually wanted to ask Scott, which um, draft of their amendment they're looking at, because I heard you mention a fifth instance of amendment and I only see four instances on draft 2.1 of what came out of your committee. So I'm a little confused. Um, do you know which draft you're on mute, Scott? Which one you um, approved? Let me, uh, I thought it was on the most current, but let me uh, let me double check that. So I, I think it might be that um, so the committee Ways and Means Committee point point one they decided they didn't want to do the fifth instance of amendment and they voted on in, in the first through fourth instance of amendment as version 2.1 and that's what was voted and, and sent back to the committee oh, so, okay so, so, so uh, that's, that's the real one right so representative beck might be just looking at the first one that they reviewed okay. yeah i'm looking i'm looking at 1.1 michelle and i'm not seeing 2.1 anywhere on if you email. check i can i can email it to, email it to you. I emailed it to everybody yesterday, but I send it again. Maybe. Oh, I have it. I'm sorry. I have it. I have it. Okay. Okay. Yep. That was what was throwing, throwing okay. me was that fifth instance of amendment. So if, if I'm hearing correctly, mm -hmm. the only yeah. actual appropriation is the $500,000 from the general fund to the cannabis control cannabis yeah. special yeah. fund. Is that correct? That's yes. correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm still lost. Marty? Well, I had the same concern that Robin had, but I guess we got that figured out and maybe it sounds like it's gonna be changed anyway uh, regarding that discussion with Maria and Stephanie and Michelle perhaps. But <laughs> my other question is regarding this whole section um, 11 regarding the social equity part. And in section 13 of the bill, this is back into the bill, not the ways and means, there's no. a discussion about um, developing uh, criteria for the loans shall be done by somebody or other. I need to pull it up again here. Um, but is there some place to develop who are the social equity appropriate applicants? Um, is that to be left up to this group as well to determine who those applicants may be, the identity of those persons? Yes. So there are groups. All of Section 13 is for the Cannabis Control Board in consultation with its advisory committee, ACCD, and the Executive Director of Racial Equity, to develop social equity criteria, which would identify who the social equity applicants would be. Okay, not just loan criteria, but who those actual applicants, what the criteria would be to fit into that category of a social equity applicant. That is correct. And is there a deadline for determining that? Yes, October 15, 2021. Um, Thank you. That's all. Did, did you speak with ACCD about their capacity to administer this? Yes. Um, we met with them and they testified before our committee. Um, and the language that you see um, in, in, in these sections, um, they, they suggested some amendments. Um, one of their concerns um, was that, well, they are able to handle grant programs. Um, Loans is something new, um, and typically they would work with VITA, but because VITA can't handle um, loans to a cannabis entity, um, they are going to have to find a third party um, to do the loan servicing. Um, there are at least one bank and one credit union in Vermont that have dealt with cannabis establishments, the dispensaries, um, and so they anticipate working with those. So that's why you will see in... Section 988, which is in section 12, some language that says, should the agency be unable to do so, the program shall not move forward until the General Assembly appropriates the appro 
operational resources necessary for the agency to make loans and provide financial assistance to social equity applicants. And that was language that they suggested in case they can't contract with a third party to provide the loan services. Robin. Thanks. So I have to ask what the operational resources would be. How is that being defined? Well, I think what they mean there, and this would be something that, that would come up later if they are unable to find a third party, is that they need someone to basically do loan underwriting um, for, for these social equity applicants. And they don't have the capacity to do that in their own. What they proposed was finding a third party, but if they cannot find that third party, then they would have to come back here um, and get an appropriation if we want them to provide those services. Okay. And that would but, happen in a later. Right, and this is not committing us to appropriating the operational resources. It's just saying that they have to come back to the General Assembly and we can decide if we want to or not. That's correct. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, I understand that Stephanie's on her way in to understand this. I'm halfway tempted to switch. If we're, I, I, I'm just so aware that we urged others to come in so we, because we thought we were going to go through this one quickly. And anyway, I, I apologize to the other people who arrived early um, and now we have you waiting. I really regret that. Um, okay. <laughs> thank you. Um, Stephanie, we are struggling to understand, um, and please somebody describe to Stephanie what we don't understand because I don't understand it. I understand it so little I cannot ask a question. Do you want me to do right. it? Yeah, go for it, Michelle. Sure. So Stephanie, this is what Becky and I had emailed you about yesterday, which is, so there's the creation of the Cannabis Business Development Fund, and there's sources of funding there. One is a $500,000 general fund appropriation, and the other one is our one-time contributions from integrated licensees. Yeah. So in section 14, um, the way that it's structured, so ACCD would be administering the fund. The fund is designated specially for certain uses for loans and grants to social equity applicants. Um, ACCD would be making those loans and grants um, or contract if they weren't able to do that. Um, and so the way that Section 14 came out of the Senate um, and that y'all structured it was that in subsection A, it says that 500,000 is transferred from the general fund into the Cannabis Business Development Fund. And then there's a B that says then in FY22, $500,000 is appropriated from the special fund to ACCD to make those loans and grants. And so the question that we were trying to understand is why can't ACCD just access the funds directly from the special fund? Why do they have to be appropriated to ACCD out of the special fund? Because the, okay, so the transfer is just the fund to fund action, moving money from the general fund to jumpstart money into the special fund. Every, every agent, every fund can only be spent if you appropriate dollars out of it. So it's the transfer is one transaction and the appropriation is another. Um, you could directly appropriate general fund to ACCD and say, use it the same way you would you know, do the development fund. But you need two, two actions because the fund really doesn't have any money in it yet. So you're transferring money from the general fund into the new special fund and you're simply giving the spending authority out of the special fund so it can only be used in a manner consistent with the things that you know you pay for out of the special fund and so that's it was just how you get the general fund to be spent on because it's one time general fund is sort of the jump start piece essentially um it's so, not the jump start fees this is a totally separate piece isn't it it's about the social equity grant program but it's the general fund, so it's it, it, you're going to have a, a different source of money into this fund. I mean, you're, you, the only source of money right now is this five hundred thousand dollars from the general fund, right? And that's done as a transfer, the way that it came out of the Senate. And then how once it's transferred from one fund to another, 
Then the next step is how do you spend it out of that fund that it landed in? And that's the appropriation. So it's just the spend, the appropriation is just spending authority. It is saying you department X have spending authority out of this fund in this yeah. fiscal year. So there, but aren't there two things going on here? One is this creation of this new social equity grant program, which yeah. is not being funded at all by the special funds. We're being asked to fund, put 500,000 of general fund one-time dollars to that program. It has nothing to do with the rest of, you know, of setting up the cannabis board and making sure. It's not, it, no, this is all in the new development fund. The $500,000 is only into the new development fund. It has nothing to do with the administration of the cannabis board. That's all done previously in the bill you passed last year. So and it's all it's in the but this is just about the development fund, right? Right. Yes. Okay. So. Again, I am so fried that I am not following this well, and I'm not reading the document. Are you Are you trying to say that the 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 um, the new special grant program is separate from the development fund? Well. I'm just stuck because I had no idea that we were going to be asked to put 500,000 of one-time money into this program and all. This is totally new news to me and I believe the rest of the, of the committee. So I'm a little bit surprised by this and I'm probably having a hard time getting over that. Um, and where, period. And now I'm not following where it's going, but others are, and I'm not going to torture you guys over my um, lack of ability to comprehend as long as other people are following it. That's I'm relying on the committee. So committee, uh, do you have any additional questions for these poor people that I'm making suffer? And uh, what is your pleasure? I don't see that we're having any additional questions. Robin? Uh, a couple of things. I'm just wondering what the votes were out of the various committees. I don't know how many committees were involved by some people from Commerce and GovOps and Ways and Means. So that's my first question. Ways and Means on the amendment was 911. Okay. House GovOps was 920. Okay. Did Commerce weigh in or? No. You're just there because you love to hang out with us, Charlie. Okay. <laughs> um, and so the only appropriation is this 500000 and it would be one-time general fund money. Do we have? So it's accounted have? for in the Senate side of things. So it's all accounted for up to date into the conference committee. It is. Yeah. Okay. And if, if we don't do this, what happens? If you don't, if we don't pass the bill, I, and don't. <laughs> I, well, I, I, right now, I guess we have to do. Um, I guess we're going to be asked to do an amendment to actually appropriate the money. Is that right? We actually have to do an amendment, or we don't have to do an amendment. We can approve this as is and as amended by Ways and Means. That's that's where we are. That's where we've gotten to. So at some point, pretty quickly, somebody can propose that. Okay, that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm working up to that. I just want to be sure I understand what I'd be saying. And so the only yeah. appropriation we're being asked to do is the one time half a million dollars, which Stephanie, you're telling us is already in. It's already accounted for. It's, it's already a accounted for. Yeah. So I will make a motion that we um, support S25 uh, as amended by House Government Operations and House Ways and Means. Okay, thank you. Is That's there a second? I'll second. Thank you. Um, Marty? Well, I, I guess we've gone on past that, but my whole question was, where did this whole concept of social equity applicants come from and who discussed it and what is the but that's the base bill, I understand. Uh, the concept of putting this in and why and where and $500,000 worries me, of course, but it's the whole basic concept of that being included in the bill. Can uh, you give me just a brief background, John? Sure. So um, this came from the Senate Judiciary, but in when the governor um, 
chose not to sign S54 or Act 164, one of the concerns we raised was the lack of a social equity. Um, and so I think what the Senate was doing here um, was trying to address one of the concerns of the governor of creating a social equity fund so that uh, people who have been dis disproportionately impacted by the cannabis prohibition um, would have um, a source of funding um, to get into the cannabis industry, the regulated cannabis industry. Um, and so that's what I think the background story is with respect to the social equity fund. Okay, thank you. Is there any further discussion committee? Are we ready to vote this? Okay, so Maida, do you wanna call the roll? Okay, so the, thank you. So the motion before us is uh, to support S25 as recommended by House Government Operations and further amended by House Ways and Means. Uh, are we ready? Yes. Yes, Representative Fagan. No. Representative Feltis. No. Representative Harrison. Yes. Representative Helm, not with us. Uh, Representative Jessup. Yes. Representative Shy. Yes. Representative Squirrel. Yes. Representative Tolino. Yes. Representative Townsend, yes. Representative Iacovone. Yes. Representative Hooper. Yes. Um, are we holding this open or? Um, un until we get to the end of, of our meeting, we have um, one more group, one more bill to hear. So we'll, we'll and <clears throat> if we, if Rep Helm doesn't show up, then we'll close it. And, okay. and our reporter, Madam Chair, our reporter on this bill. Oh, who is it? Well, I have the Cannabis Control Board, if that, but there's also other com other organiz people that are involved, but I don't know if that matters. Is anybody volunteering other than Robin? The answer is no. I think you just <laughs> heard Robin. Rep shot. Yeah, I, um, yeah, okay. I'm happy to pass the baton if anybody else would prefer to do it. Okay. Um, Rep Gannon and Scott, if you're still here, you're not. Um, Michelle, um, thank, thank you all for joining us. And I beg your pardon for my um, frustration. I, it's just been a long week. Thank you. I hope, I hope you understand. Have a, have a great evening. Thank you for having us. Uh, yeah. Maida? Um, before everyone scatters to the four winds, I wanted to double check with regard to S25, please. Am I to close the vote on this? Yes, please. We're done. Yes, Bob, please send Bob is done. Okay. Yeah. So then our vote, so that it's uh, formal here on S25 was eight, two, one. Okay. Thank you. Eight, two, one. And we know, and, and Robin was volunteered for that. Um, okay. And we know where we are with, we know we have a plan for how we're going to figure out S62 and we'll see everybody at um, Monday afternoon at 3.30. Okay, any, any further, let's, before the sun goes down folks. Um, thank you very, very much. Um, really appreciate your time. Take us off live.